Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. So today we got this Troy built TB22EC. This is actually another trash day pickup. I got tipped off that this guy was sticking out of a trash can about a block away. And sure enough, when I got there, this end was sticking straight up. So I grabbed it and brought it home. So right off the bat, I can kind of see why they threw it out. We got no pull cord. So we're gonna have to deal with that first. So we'll bring you inside and we'll get going. Okay, so bringing this thing inside, I was kind of wondering if we were going to have to deal with a clutch, which is usually in this section here. And the uh, the quick way to check that, there's a lot of videos online about it, is if you look at your trimmer head and just spin it like this, it means you have a clutch inside the power head. So I think, I'm hoping since all these wires are external and not all in the handle here, I can remove these screws and slide this power head off and we'll be able to kind of manipulate a little bit better to get where we need to go. So I'm gonna try a, a T20 first. Yep, it's T20. There's one here, here, and then on one on the bottom, so three total. Okay, so I'm hoping that this thing will just slide out without having to remove any of the handle pieces, which it did, awesome. Okay, let me readjust this handle so it's not in the way. We're gonna be tethered to it, but I need to be able to walk around. Okay, reposition a little bit and I can, I kind of notice that we've got almost like a rodent chew through on the return line. So we'll probably have to replace that. The filter line looks okay, it's just dirty. And the tank looks pretty clean, surprisingly. So it's very possible that they just broke the pull cord and then didn't want to mess with it and threw it out. So let's get to the pull cord. Yeah, and you can kind of see the remnants right there. Maybe the rodent chewed through that thing too. I don't know. So we got to get this red plastic piece off and the clutch because the engine crankshaft will slide through that red piece. And usually there's some screws on the back side we need to take off. Uh, looks like just the one up here. So we'll get that one done first. That's a T22. And then there's another three, one here, here, and here. But before we do that, we got to get this clutch off of here. And you can't, this is a T15 that fits in there, should, yeah. Actually, that's a little loose, maybe it's a T20. To get a thinner screwdriver. Yeah, it's a T20 for the clutch, but if you can see, you try to unscrew that, the whole engine turns, so you need to stop the the piston from moving up and down. And usually you can do that with a, a piston stop tool. I'll bring that out in a second once I get the spark plug out. Okay. Not too bad. Okay, now the piston stop. Little handy tool that just screws into the spark plug hole and holds the piston from rotating as you try to remove the clutch drum. There we go. drum is off. Here's our clutch. And I don't think I have a removal tool for this, but it's got this kind of raised middle section here. So I usually use an open-ended adjustable wrench. Okay. So the hard part's going to be actually holding the, the power head steady while you're trying to do this because these are on pretty tight. Uh, 
And another way to do this is with a punch and a hammer if you're not that strong. You can kind of use the ears that are right here, give it a quick tap, and it'll kind of loosen it just enough that you can get the, the wrench on her. on there tight we got it okay, let's get that washer there and there's a spacer here too so don't lose that okay so these three screws then we should be exposing the recoil after this okay we should be able to wiggle this thing off Oh, we missed these two tank screws. Okay. Here we are. Let's grab them screws before we lose them. Okay. So there's our recoil. And it's got like a... It's got one of those push clip things, so we're going to have to pry that out. And it looks like this took a hit right here, too. Kind of just like that walk-behind edger that we did. I don't know if that's supposed to be there. But let me move this, and we'll start getting into this. All right, so let's see what it was doing and see if it, it will recoil or not. No, it's just staying, staying pulled out. I think we might have a spring problem. So that's all the way out. So they must have broke it halfway through the, the pull cord. So let's pull this plate off. I don't know if we're missing a screw here yet or not. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any threads in there, so I think it's just supposed to be the two. What I don't know is if that's supposed to be bent like that. I don't think it is. I think it's supposed to be straight. Okay, so we should probably we should probably take this thing apart to clean it because it seems kind of sticky. The way I do that is this little push clip here get a larger flathead screwdriver underneath there and kind of pry it up. There we go. And these go flying too, so try to <laughs> try to hold your hand over there to stop that. But we're good there. Let's get this spring assist off. Heard the spring behind there kind of slide back. Okay. All right, we should just be able to pull this thing off of here. broken. No, we're in good shape there. And I'm not even going to take that out because that looks like it's in really good shape. Okay, so the old cord here just has a knot that we got to pull out. And that piece. And I'm going to spend some time and clean this stuff up and bring you back when we are ready to put the cord back in.
Okay, well, we're clean and ready to reassemble. I wanted to go over a couple points on where to actually clean and then where to lightly lubricate. You don't want to overdo it with lubrication and cause uh, a problem in here. But uh, the main one is this pivot point kind of boss. You want to clean that off. Usually packs with uh, clutch material or dirt. And then the two pivot points here that goes around that. That's your highest friction point and most likely to cause it not to recoil like it should. And if your spring is rusted or really dirty, you're gonna to wanna to take this out and recoil and put it back together. But with this one being as good as it is, I'm gonna just drop it in and leave it as is. So we gotta line this tab up here with the slot there. That's good to go. And then this piece has kind of a recessed spot here that needs to fit around that loop. So we're going to see if we can't hit that first shot here. Did we get it? No. This might take a little bit to do because the coil kind of hits the other side of the, the pivot here so and stops you from dropping down. So just be patient, wiggle it on there. I think I just got it there. Yeah. So we are engaged there. And for the time being, I'm going to drop this on and not put that washer on that locks it in because I want to be able to wind it using this cog. So this one uses that profile there and slips around the hook on that assist spring. There. Okay, shoot some lubrication in between that pivot point. Not a lot, just enough to soak in. I'm gonna wipe off the excess here. So now we have to wind this thing up, and before we do that, someone already helped us out here and marked the drum. That's where the hole is, where the cord needs to go through this ferrule and into that drum when we go to put a new cord in. So uh, let's take a look at the cord we got. This is the same one that I've used on a couple other projects. We might actually have a length here that will work. Let's see how long that is compared to the one that was there. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so yeah, I think I'm just going to use this scrap piece. It should be long enough that it doesn't dead stop when you're pulling it. So one thing to note is when you're cutting your own, maybe off a bigger roll, you're going to want to use a lighter and burn the ends and then kind of make a needle point so it's easier for you to thread thread it through a hole. And this is already done on this because it was already a scrap piece. So now we're gonna have to coil this up. And what I was saying before is the holes here, we got a mark there, someone helped us out. We're gonna coil this up until the spring stops and, and then back it off to realign it with that mark and the ferrule in the housing. So they don't really make these easy. Okay, so spring stop there. The mark's down here. So all we're gonna do is rotate it back to line it up. And at this point, we can take the assist spring portion of this off so we have better access to get our knot in there. So needle point through the ferrule. Hopefully we can get it through that hole. <laughs> okay, rewind it. I don't really have a good way to hold this. Okay, 
Now the fun part is holding this and tying a knot. Probably should have put the handle on first so this doesn't get sucked in like it just did. <laughs> Not as good. And we just need to pull it back through. Okay, so we're pushed in there. And I'm going to let this kind of retract in. Hopefully not lose the end of it. We actually can tie a knot in it. Okay, so looks like we're working pretty good. Okay, so the handle I just pulled from a dead unit I had. This is a MTD handle. Just feed that through there on that side. If it'll go through. I need to melt that one a little bit more. Yeah. And I usually double knot the, the handle side. Really just because there's the room in the handle. I'm not sure how much of a benefit that's actually given me, but. Okay. Let's undo the knot we did. Reassembly time. Assist spring goes in. And then that washer. Right here. That's pretty easy to put on. Just push it on. You can almost push it on with your hands or you can use a socket like this. Go like that, push it around the plastic. Make sure it's seated the whole way down so it doesn't pop off. Now, this guy, I think I'm going to leave it as is because I'm not sure if this little bent down piece is meant to kind of ride along the drum here and keep it engaged as far as it can be against the spring that's on the other side of here. And that's kind of the feeling I get when I put this on here. Is it, oh, well, it doesn't even go that close, but... Okay, but I think I'm just going to leave it the way that it was. And if we run into issues, we know how to take it apart at least to straighten it back out. Kind of ran into the same issue with that walk behind edger. And the flywheel was kind of scraping against this, but that was pushed out this way, not so much in. Okay, I think we're ready to put it back together. Okay, got the engine pulled back over here, and before we drop this recoil back on, you want to double check that your starter pawls are moving and free like this. There's springs that kind of return it back in, and that's what allows the recoil to catch and actually start your machine. So you want to make sure these are moving like they should. And this should be as simple as just dropping this on here. Make sure I didn't forget anything. I think we're all good. not sitting the whole way down so what's stopping us here maybe these wires let me flip this around here so the kill wires are supposed to go through that little slot there maybe it was up a little higher and stopping us so dropping that back down let's try again No, 
that was spark plug wire. Yep. Okay. We're fully seated. There's a, uh, there's kind of a slot in this red piece that the spark plug wire needs to slide into. And I think that's where we were misaligned. Let's get these three screws in. Okay, so with these three in, I actually want to take the piston stop out and just verify that the deformation in that plate isn't going to cause us an issue. Okay, so piston stop is out. I just want to pull this and make sure there's no screeching or interference with the flywheel before I get this thing all the way back together. I think it's screeching, so let's take it back off and we'll straighten that plate out. Okay, so before I pull this off of here, you can see there's a shiny rub mark right here. And my guess is it's hitting the outer edge of the flywheel. So I think, actually, I'm just now seeing This piece is actually supposed to fit behind this little lip here. There's a kind of a notch in the plastic and it's deformed up. So I wonder if someone was in here trying to do this and deform this plate. But I think we're gonna straighten this out. It's just thin metal, so we should be able to do that pretty quick here with our hands. Okay, so I think I got it good enough. I don't know if it's ever going to be perfectly straight like it should be, but let's get this dropped in here. So the bottom actually needs to go in that little slot instead of on top like that. And I'm not sure if that was in there like that before or not. I'll have to look back, but I think we have it fixed now. Okay, back on the engine. Double check, no noise there. Oh, here's that slot that the spark plug needs to, to slide in. So I'm kind of manipulating that as I'm pushing it down on. And the gas tank needs to slide in these slots as well, as well as keeping the kill wires in that slot. So a lot of things that need to happen at the same time. in there. There we go. Get these three screws in again and try it again. Okay, try this one more time. We're hoping for no noise. Yeah, I think we're good there. Okay. Gas tank screws. Lonely screw on the back here. And let's get that clutch on. So it went this spacer the washer, the clutch, now you put that piston stop back in to tighten that. There's a washer that goes in between the drum and the clutch. Just be aware of that. Tighten this back down. Okay. 
All right. Piston stop can come back out, put the spark plug in, and the return line actually broke off as we were working. So we're gonna have to replace that quick before doing its first test run. Okay. All right, return line. Okay, went and washed my hands quick because I didn't want to introduce any new dirt into the fuel system here. So this return line broke, like I said, and inside there's like a little connector. I don't know if you can see that in there. But what that connector does is stop the return line from pulling out. Not necessarily a requirement. It's not a big deal if yours is missing. You just want to have some extra line in the bottom there. But we're going to pull that out and reuse it because I like to if they're available. Right there. Hopefully this line comes out in one piece so we don't have to go fishing for it. Yeah, so we're good there. Okay, so I found a pretty equivalent line size that I'm gonna use here. And to fish these in, it's best if you have kind of like a angled needle tip cut into it. So we're going to try to feed this in this hole here. Sometimes it helps out if you cut a long piece. It fits through the hole a little bit so you can get a pair of needle nose on the inside and pull it through. Okay, so we got that cut piece off, so we're gonna terminate that flat. Put this coupler on and just pull it back through just like that now for length just kind of estimate it cut it off okay so that's all I'm going to do for right now on the fuel. I don't know if the purge bulb is going to hold or not, but I'd like to hear it at least fire off before going any further because this is kind of a lot of stuff to do before even hearing it run. So we got to slide the clutch into the shaft now. And if you're aware, there's a square drive here and the rod inside is square as well. So you kind of have to almost rotate and shimmy it in until it seats completely. And you can kind of align it ahead of time. You can see the flat side on the outside of the drum here. So I think I've got it lined up. Hopefully it's just an easy, easy push on. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I'll get these three screws put back in and we'll take it outside. Okay, let's test this thing. Okay. Got some fresh 40 to one here. See if we're priming. Yeah, we're priming good. Okay, so this one takes the, uh, the 21 spline adjustments if I need to touch that. But place your bets now. Do you think that they tossed it just because of the pull cord and it ran before that? Or it's been sitting and something happened to the pull cord. Maybe it rotted away. But yeah, place your bets now.
awesome. Well, I think that's our answer. I think it was just the pull cord and they tossed it. Okay, well, one last check I like to do on these is make sure that the head's feeding correctly. And what I do is I just grab both strings, press in the middle, and if it advances like that, you're good. So, yeah, I think we're all done. Well, okay, with that, I think we're gonna end this one here. Kind of a quick fix, just needed that recoil, a new return line, and didn't even need to touch the carb. So I think people are a little too quick to throw things away nowadays, especially with the cost of these now, but hey, it is what it is. So hopefully what we covered helps somebody out. Thanks for joining me on this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.